I'm, I'm amazed. I'm very pleased. I love history. I love baseball history and Cubs history. And to think that I'm in there with only two other broadcasters, and they're very prominent and famous and wonderful, the late Harry Carey and the late Jack Brickhouse. And to think that I'm the third is very special to me, very special. Did you ever, like, had you ever thought about the potential of this happening? I was hoping. You know, you always hope for things like that. But some things are almost so lofty that you don't really dwell on it because you don't want to be disappointed. So I did not sit around thinking about it a lot. I thought, you know, that'd be pretty cool if I could get there and, and make the Cubs Hall of Fame. I mean, who wouldn't want to be part of a Hall of Fame of such a great organization like the Cubs? So, uh, yes, I did think about it, but no, I did not dwell on it. When they told you that Crane was coming in tonight to announce the class, did you have any, was there anything that you thought maybe you were going to be part of it? No, I, I did not. He said, I saw him... Uh, coming in or going out of the park on this homestand earlier and he said yeah I'm going to drop by the booth on you know Thursday night or actually it was going to be Monday night and then it got changed to Wednesday for whatever reason and I said great yeah okay fine he says we're going to talk about the new Hall of Fame members Jose Cardinal remember him and I said yeah he had the greatest hairdo in the history of big league ball so I, I was a, a baseball fan when I was very young and of course I know Jose Cardinal and I thought great and then so he came in and he mentioned Jose and he said, oh yeah, there's one other guy. And so. We talked in, uh, about when Vinny Scully passed, you know, about growing up and listening to him. Who were some of the voices as a kid in California that you listened to that kind of inspired you to want to go down the path you did? I would say the Giants announcers, uh, Lon Simmons and Russ Hodges, and then the uh, great Bill King, who did the radio for the Golden State Warriors, and the Oakland Raiders, and then later the Oakland A's. Those would be the three. And then as I got older and started really seriously thinking about trying to become a, a, a professional play-by-play -play man, then I would listen to Vin Scully, and then later Bob Costas. Um, I think every baseball announcer in the last half century has been influenced by Vin Scully in some way. Whether they want to admit it or not, that's their business, but I think they have. So those would be some of the some of the people that I really, really admired. You had a lot of great calls to make, but what is your favorite? Is it 2016? Uh, I would say yes, um, because it's the biggest win in Chicago Cubs history, and uh, I was there. I was just lucky enough. I had nothing to do with the win at all, obviously, but when you're a broadcaster, you know that you have to deliver and you're never sure if the words are going to tumble out of your mouth in the proper order, especially under maximum pressure uh, and maximum limelight like that night. So I was, I was pleased it came out the way it did. It's by no means the greatest call that's ever been made in baseball history. It's pretty much standard, but it was the best I could do, and I can live with it. What other memories do you have that you like to think about? Well, I, I wish Ron Santo was here um, because Ronnie was a great partner for 15 years and uh, I wish my parents were still alive. Um, but I have a great wife, Trish. Our 35th wedding anniversary is coming up in October. I have two great kids, Janelle and Amber. And when I got this job, this is how long I've been here. When I got this job, Janelle was in first grade. Amber was a preschooler, jumping all over the place. They used to come in the booth and they would take pens and argue over whose uh, who's, uh, felt, uh, you know, felt pen it was. And, and, and they would bother me when I was on the air. They'd tug on my sleeve. Sister is not sharing. <laughs> so I would have to share that with our audience. But, um, but they, were, they were three years old and five years old when I got the job. And now they're in their 30s. And uh, it, again, I, I have no idea how I have lasted this long. But the strange thing is I feel good. I still feel healthy. I still feel motivated. I think the fans have a lot to do with it. I have a great partner in Ron Coomer. Zach Zaidman is wonderful. We have total freedom uh, afforded us by the Cubs and by the radio station, Mitch Rosen, Crane Kenny, Tom Ricketts, and his siblings. They never interfere. They never interfere with what we do. They never say, don't do this or don't. So 
I'm very lucky in that regard. We, we don't take a broadcast lightly. We always prepare. We're ready to go. But Coomer is such a great partner. And Zach is so much fun and so good. And um, I, I wish every broadcaster could have experienced what I have for about the last, well, 27 years totally. But in particular, Ron Coomer is just what a, what a great human being. I, I just look at him and smile, and we laugh every day, and then we got to cover the World Series, and, and I had 15 great years with Ron Santo, and, and memories there that I'll never forget. So um, I forget the original question. I'm starting to <laughs> ramble. You mentioned the fans. What was that like for you just now to get that ovation? Well, I, I'm not used to that, so I didn't know whether I should, you know, <laughs> salute or, you know, wave or... I, 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 just made it real quick, and uh, it was very nice. The, I think the, um, that's another thing about being a Cubs announcer. The audience that we get to perform for every single day is incredibly gracious. At the end of every season, invariably, I'll get emails or texts from people that I know, and they thank me for the job that I did. Thank you, Pat. No, 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 you've got it wrong. I'm the one thanking you for being a great audience, because they really are an incredible group of fans. Uh, knowledgeable, numerous, passionate, uh, and just the sweetest bunch of people that you could possibly have as a, as a public performer. Did the, uh, the Arnado stuff, did that kind of help you snap back into the job? Well, no, I said, I'm kind of glad this is the way my half inning ended, <laughs> with, a, with a Cardinal getting booted out of the game. Um, but uh, no, that was just one of those things, and uh, he was kind of upset, but I'm, I'm glad to see him go. That gives us a better chance of winning. <laughs>